the USS Yorktown emerges as a colossal figure in the annals of American naval history, an icon that would transcend generations against the thunderous backdrop of World War II. Originally, the aircraft carrier was named Bonhomme Richard, and its keel was put down December 1st, 1941, six days before the attack on Pearl Harbor. The keel is typically a structural beam that extends from the bow to the stern across the center of the boat. The ship was renamed the USS Yorktown CV-10, honoring the original carrier Yorktown CV-5, which was the only U.S. carrier lost at the Battle of Midway in June 1942. The CV-10 carried out several strikes, including those over the Marshall Islands, Tarawa, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, and the Battle of of the Philippine Sea, Formosa, and the Japanese mainland. She was an Essex-class aircraft carrier, tall and imposing, a true sea titan, with a standard load of 27,100 long tons and a full load of 36,380 long tons. This maritime behemoth towered 14 and a half stories above the raging ocean waves. As you step aboard, the sheer scale engulfs you, it's a feast of steel and salt water. The ship is 872 feet long with a beam of 147 feet 6 inches. The ship's crew numbered 380 officers, 3,088 enlisted personnel, and 90 planes. The Yorktown was more than just a ship. It was a symbol of maritime might, a sentinel of the high seas. A crew of three 1,300 men moved purposefully and precisely through a maze of steel corridors. In the nostrils, the metallic bite of machinery, a fusion of sweat, grease, with the smell of salt. The rhythmic percussion of boots on steel decks reverberated throughout the ship, echoing with unwavering resolve. In war, the Yorktown's metal was not only tested, but forged. Consider the sweltering heat of the South Pacific where the relentless sun collides with the noise of aircraft engines. The Yorktown was at the epicenter of the Philippine Sea Battle, also known as the Great Mariner's Turkey Shoot. The deafening roar of planes taking off and landing, the relentless smell of aviation fuel, and the tension of battle overwhelmed even the saltiest seafaring veteran. American carrier planes descended like vengeful angels their payloads wreaking havoc on the Japanese fleet and leaving the sea awash in chaos and the lingering stench of burning oil. The Yorktown found itself in the Battle of Leyte Gulf, the largest naval battle in history. As the war's crescendo grew, the Yorktown's mission was crucial right here. With its planes dancing with fate in the skies above, protecting American escort carriers from Japanese attacks, the distant boom of naval artillery, the acrid smoke of battle, and the salty wind-whispering tales of heroism were imprinted on the ship's very fabric. This battle effectively ended the Japanese Navy's ability to fight as a cohesive force. In the Pacific theater, the Yorktown faced an unforgiving foe, the kamikaze. These suicidal planes attacked with ferocity, causing widespread destruction. On March 18, 1945, while en route to airfield strikes, Japanese aircraft attacked the USS Enterprise, the USS Hornet, USS Intrepid, and the USS Yorktown. After dumping a bomb on the signal bridge, an enemy aircraft flew through the first deck and exploded near the ship's hull. On March 30th, an enemy aircraft attempted a suicide dive against the USS Yorktown yet again but was shot down by her anti-aircraft gutters while passing over the ship near the island of Okinawa, splashing to the port side. Nonetheless, the carrier stood as a symbol of unyielding resilience, its crew likened to unyielding sentinels guarding the ship's heart, their bravery surpassing mortal limits. Nicknamed the Fighting Lady, she received the Presidential Unit Citation and earned 11 battle stars for World War II service. After the war, the Yorktown transitioned from a warrior to a mentor as a training ship. But the call of duty beckoned yet again. She was recommissioned in 1953 to serve in the Korean War. 
Modernization efforts in the 1950s bestowed an angled flight deck and steam catapults topside, ensuring its continued relevance in a rapidly changing world. She qualified for the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal three times during her tour in the Pacific for her responses to Communist Chinese shellings of Formosa, Kimoi, and Matsu. Yorktown's principal duty from 1965 to 1967 was combat operations in Vietnam, where she earned an additional five battle stars. In December 1968, she played a transcendent role during one of the most memorable instances of its latter career. The Yorktown was prepared for a recovery mission. As Apollo 8, the spacecraft transporting the first humans to orbit the moon descended from the heavens. The salty mist of the ocean mingled with the exhilaration of triumph as the ship's crew executed a faultless recovery, safely returning the astronauts to Earth's embrace. The USS Yorktown, CV-10, sailed away from its final moorings in 1970, leaving echoes of history in its wake. It was moved to the Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum in Charleston, South Carolina in 1975. Till this day, Visitors can walk its decks, absorb tangible echoes of the past, and learn about this iconic vessel's storied legacy as a guardian of liberty and a sentinel of the seas. The legacy of those who served aboard this legendary aircraft carrier continues to live on as a testament to human ingenuity and the unwavering spirit of those who dare to conquer the unknown. These are Interesting Things with J.C.